Hello, Angela Princeville here again today. And the last time I had talked to you about final orders and whether the passage of time and not following the final order means it has expired. And as I said in the last video, know your order does not um, expire simply because there's been passage of time and um, the parties no longer follow the order. And this, in this case, we're referring to final uh, court orders. So if you have a final court order and you would like to um, have a change made to that order, what do you have to do? Well, the first and most important thing that a person needs to do is show that there's been a material change in circumstances. And the person who has the responsibility for showing a material change is the person that wants to change the order. So, I mean, if, if there's two people that agree that a change needs to be made, then usually it could be done on consent. But if it's not being done on consent, then the person with the burden of proof is the party that's seeking the change. And they have to show that there's been a material change in circumstances. And really what this means is it has to be a change that, you know, if if the court was aware of, of the change at the time, that they wouldn't have made the order that was made, or it would have resulted, meaning in essence, it would have resulted in a different in different terms. Um, in the context of um, signed agreements and uh, separation agreements, it means that the parties did not, you know, contemplate this change. So what you're trying to show the court is this change in circumstances is not something that was, um, factored in by the courts. It's not something that we built into the framework of, of our agreement. And now it's happened and I want to change to this order. So that's a threshold question before you, before the courts even begin to go into the merits of your case. You have to, to first show that there is a material change in circumstances. And if you understand, I've used the word material. It's not just any change. And, um, for a change to be considered material, it has to be a change that's substantial, it wasn't foreseen at the time, and it's continuing. So a temporary, um, you know, change in circumstances may not, would usually not be sufficient grounds to change a final order. So what are some things that could be a material change? Well, losing your job, for example, again, it has to be continuing. It may or may not be, um, a material change in circumstances, but there's been factors like loss of a job, um, you know, an accident, illness, remarriage of one one or both partners, um, you know, other medical um, situations, uh, maybe retirement. Again, all of those examples have given you in and of themselves do not constitute material changes. They are changes, but you have to show um, that an accident, for example, was such that it prevented you from, say, being able to work. Um, if one party is relying on, on um, the medical condition of another party that prevents them from caring for a child, for example, it needs to, it needs to be shown that this is not just, you know, a temporary situation, that it's likely to be prolonged. This, it has to be some level of... Um, it has to be prolonged, in essence, like there's really no better way to put that. So not just a short one week in the hospital and then you go get uh, a final order change. No, you need to show that it's there's some continuity. So what that tells you again is what would constitute a material change would change would differ from, from case to case. As with most family um, law matters, a lot of everything's fact specific. So each retirement, for example, can be found to be a material change in circumstances in some situations and in others, it would it would not be um, considered a material change. Now, what you have to remember is a motion to change is not an appeal. So if you have issues with the previous final order that was made, you're not going to get that changed by bringing a motion to change um, the final order. The purpose of a motion to change, remember, is to show that there's been a material change in circumstances that was not contemplated at the time the order or agreement was made. So the, the courts are not going to look at the correctness of the initial order. What they're looking for is, has there been a material change in circumstances since the final order was made? Um, when it comes to custody matters, obviously, 
it's the same sort of material change threshold required. Um, and it has to be a change that affects the child. So the condition of the child, the circumstances of the child, has there been a change that is material? And once you could show that there's been that material change and then in a custody situation, the courts would now proceed to see, okay, in light of this change, what is a new custody and access arrangement that works in the child's best interest? Um, if it has to do with child support and spousal support, then the courts can, you know, look at the other factors to see, okay, what sort of variation is appropriate in the circumstances. But first and foremost, you have to show that there's been a material change in circumstances in order to change a final order.